Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Mai. I lead a business platform, Engineering for Uber. And many people ask me, like, what does that mean? I'm basically the foundation platform layer that defines the Uber business and also is the, the engine that powers pretty much all the business line. So besides communication platform, it's also ad tech, it's customer support, it's content, internationalizations, it's a vehicle, a car, a customer, an order, all the business flows and logic. So that's kind of the space we're talking about there. So everything that I power is powering at scale. Okay, and so the business lines that you see there is what you see of what Uber, everybody recognizes the ride sharing business, it's what Uber's mostly known for. And since then, we've also now moved into Uber Eats, delivering food, and then Uber Rush, a packaging, and then freight for, for shipping. And the autonomous cars we have, and then we recently announced Elevate for airplanes, and then we also have Auto for trucking, and then a bunch of other experiment things that we're running, such as Uber Family and things like that. Okay, so that's kind of the Uber business. Um, so we are in 73 countries, over 450 cities, um, 12,000 employees now. I remember when I interviewed and then four weeks later I showed up to work, I think 3,000 people showed up <laughs> as well. So I went to orientation, I was like, oh my God. Uh, I thought orientation Microsoft was big, but I had not seen Uber until then. Um, it took us about five years to get to our first uh, one billion trip and six months after that we made two billion. So um, we're still uh, growing quite a bit. Our mission, transportation as reliable as water for everyone everywhere. So we want to make sure if you want to move anything from point A to point B, we will do it for you in any mechanism that is available in the most fastest and efficient way as possible. Okay. And so what do we have challenges at scale? So even if you look at all those metrics, Uber is still in a very early stages of growth in all of our business lines, right? including our ride sharing business. Um, and then what we experience is like, no matter what we build, especially for me in platforms is, every time we get to a new product, a line, a, uh, uh, where we're gonna grow next in the different cities or markets, it's expected that the business, the technology, and the operation to scale as fast as possible. And at the same time too is, is that, um, we already have tens upon millions of riders and partners already on the platform, so then you have to add on top of that. And so everything that I build, I'm always expected to immediately think about what is your plan, Mai, to double, triple, quadruple the scale to be able to support this because we're heading there, okay? And so um, it's funny, it's, uh, at Uber, uh, we often talk about, yeah, it's like one year being at Uber is sort of like one dog year, right? And so, you know, and um, next month for me be one year at Uber. And I have to say that's, you know, it's true in many ways. I mean, I run pretty fast, but Uber runs fast, right? Because of the pace of the growth and the demand of technology in the organization. Okay. So what are some of our design principles? The so things that I think about when I have to deliver this from a platform foundation perspective, right? Platform, platform, platform. I unify everything, right? At the beginning when Uber was small and all the business line was exploding, we're in every city, everything was like point solution. Build, build, run fast as possible. But over time, it doesn't scale and it's not efficient. And so point solutions will get you that personalization uh, that gets easier to adapt. But over time with the growth, it doesn't work. So I've been spending a lot of my time at Uber in my first year now just looking at how do we move better? Building platform, re-architecting, right? Uh, finding all those points that I can actually improve little by little uh, from an engine perspective, moving that forward. But at the same time, I also have to make sure I move the business forward as well. So it's always a balance. We have uh, everything, for, as I mentioned before, is like we look at support and support hubs, getting that customization uh, that is local and regionalized, right, to the preferences, local laws, regulations. It's different in every market, every region, and every city sometimes. We actually have to go down to really granular level to make sure we meet all the local laws. Um, and then if we look about where Uber is, one of the things I always think about, where, where we all are at in every channel you can actually think of, right? Because our customers will be found everywhere. So I have to always consider where are they? What are they doing, right? And so many people, although we automate everything and everything, you know, you don't have to show up in person, in many cultures, they still like to be in person. And so you have to have all these centers and support uh, uh, that I build dashboards for and all the things for the agent and your tools that they use is because people like to just see you in person. They like to have that personal touch. So no matter how much you automate, you still have to do things that are just manual or in person. Um, and then as I mentioned before, all the mechanism means where the customers can be found, where our partners live, and how they expect to be communicated is all the channels that we actually have to uh, then support and provide for. And in all of our content, 
we've tried to personalize everything because people speak differently. They expect the design, the style to meet their culture, right? The way they see and understand information. So everything that we do in the content, we always have a base of what we want to do because we want to make sure Uber is one experience, no matter where in your world the app comes up and, and you get Uber at the same time, but we have to then add on the next layer to also customize and then you add on the legal and all that stuff afterwards. Um, other things that I think about of all the channels and mechanism and means where our customers interact with us and we also interact with them is um, we want to make sure that it's customized, right? Because a ride sharing experience is very different than, than a, delivering a package in terms of safety, security, and fraud, which is very different than, than uh, Uber Eats where you actually have multiple restaurants, multiple trip, multiple drop-offs, right? So the flows and the experience of the demand of the definition of how I build a platform is different, right? Um, and then because the complexity in the business is, is not just the engineering. Sometimes I always tell people, it's like, the engineering, the tech is actually e easy. It's the people that's hard, right? Your customers, their demand, their moods, um, it's hard. And so in a lot of things we do, we have to make sure the experience is easy to understand, easy to consume. It makes logical f sense and flow that meets that culture, that region. Right? And then also speaking in the ways that they expect to be speaking or be spoken to. And then we try to measure a lot of these things because when you customize so much, you have to know, it's like, did you overdo it? So measuring that your, did your customers, are they happy with what you delivered? Um, did they fall off somewhere in the funnel and the flow? Um, what was their feedback? So we measure a lot of these things to try to refine and get better and better. And everything that we do, as I mentioned before, is that like we automate. And so manual, we try to do is only the exception, right? So I try to automate everything that I build, whether it's dashboards, solutions for the agents, uh, 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 communications for all the customers. And so routing is very important, both within Uber support internally and also our customers coming in, right? Making sure that we route you efficiently. For instance, you know, we saw like you speak Russian, whoosh, immediately to the Russian agent, right? Versus routing several hops to try to find, oh, it's your time zone, whatever. Or if you have a payment issue, then we route you to the agent that does payment. And then to make the efficiency and to make it easier for both the customers and Uber personnel, all the designs that we have in our team, I try to templatize everything so that there's a consistency to the way the customers look at Uber and their experience and their flow, as well as the agents servicing the customers and answering questions, right? Uh, I don't want them to have a different screen for every type of thing. I want them to always know, yeah, the address tends to be here, the customer's here, the message around here, where you find people, right? And so the navigation and the design has to be easy for the agents and the customers. And then what happens too is, is that to make it more efficient, we use a lot of machine learning and stuff like that so that for the most typical answer, let's say if you have a payment issue uh, in the dashboard, I would surface like three templates for the agents to choose from. And depending on what they click, I'm like, oh, you know, I'm going to rearrange the, the the dashboard next time to make sure that the answer uh, uh, that the agents have is like they don't have to come up with their own, right? We try to suggest what the answer is. We try to fill it up to what we think the issue is based on the historical trending. And then based on that, I learned that, oh, that didn't answer the question, you know, back to the drawing board. Um, and then um, natural language processing, because a lot of times when we have certain issues, like people said, you know, I'm on the way to the airport and I forgot my phone in the car. So we have to make sure we surface those tickets right away. So we try to find certain key and critical words so that if you miss something, something happened, we surface it right away, go, oh my God, yeah, let's go call that car right back and get you your phone, right? Because you're on your way to the airport and you're gonna leave soon. So, so versus you know, a ticket being in the queue for a long time. So as I mentioned, some of the challenges uh, uh, that Uber is currently doing right now uh, and trying to get better and better at um, is with machine learning, right? We wanna make sure everything that we do is getting better and better and the way we figure out, we try to analyze, we try to learn, we measure, and then we get feedback from customers. Was that good, was it bad? Same thing to all of our agents and our employees, like, was that good, was it bad? Right, tell us. Um, we want to do more and more recommendation to ease the amount of uh, uh, thinking the person has to do or the amount of typing our customers have to do, right? And so because there's like a lot of misspelling, it takes too long. Because nowadays, the consumer, the customers, even our partners, you know, um, People are very demanding these days, and we have a very short time span. We expect the answer to come out right now. Give me things, I'm gonna shut off the app. It's too slow to know I'm leaving, right? And so everything I do, I try to measure a lot in performance and interaction because people have very short attention span. 
And so personalization as well, right? People expect to be greeted. They expect to know who I am. And you're right, you know, Uber should know that you tend to take this route. You always kind of do these things. You order this type of food. So then I would recommend, hey, you know, there's a new restaurant near you that also types this type of food. Do you want to try that versus the one you used to always order? So we try to recommend to add value to your life and your lifestyle, right? And hopefully something of value versus that we injected some ad. You're like, what the heck is this for? Um, and segmentation, because we're all over the globe in a lot of different cultures and cities, we want to make sure that even if you, you have a ride-sharing experience or an Uber Eats experience, um, both of those on its own are very different experience, but at the same time, it's like, then we have to kind of customize it to the regions and then the actual segment of the market itself as well. And uh, deliverability is very really important for us because a lot of time we send out communication or the customers communicate to us, it doesn't always come through. So one of the things I measure a lot is like, did the communication get delivered? Um, was there a lot of errors? What was the, uh, the speed of the delivery, right? Because I want to make sure that the interaction is just as if you're talking to a person, right? It just bounces back and forth versus there shouldn't be some sort of weird time lag. Um, and then automation, automation, automation. I don't think I could ever say that enough even to my own engineering teams. Automate, 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 right? To ease the mistakes, to, to make it simpler, to make it a lot faster. We want to always automate and then to learn from it. And so with machine learning, We've gotten better at recommendation. We've gotten better in terms of answering people's questions and based on the questions of the problems that they have. Because a lot of times people come, we have all kinds of questions. You know, whether you're a driver, you're stuck in some sign-up flow, you're a rider who your pickup didn't come, or your route was sort of weird, so your driver took some weird route, or what happened to my food, the, the box got crushed, right? So every one of those things, I always have to make sure that there's so many possible routes and funnels and flows that I have to make sure that I'm routing most efficiently possible to get you your, okay, the, the car will come back with the next set of food, the rest has already been told, right? So you don't have to wait for your dinner a little too, you know, much longer. So a lot of things for the future, right? Um, Uber's got much better many things that we do, but we still have long ways to go in many ways. Um, and looking at our customers, you know, they, they're changing so much all the time, everywhere. So we want to make sure that one of the things we look at is all the various channel mechanism and means. Where are my customers? Where did they move to? Where did they go? What are they feeling? What are they doing when they interact with us and when we, when, and when, um, we interact with them? Uh, um, and how do we do better, right? Because just because they give you an answer, maybe too short, maybe too long, you don't have that much time. Um, so looking at and really understanding our customer experience. And not only understanding our customer experience, but understanding where they live and how they move through the flow, right? It's understand the true life cycle uh, of, of your customer. I remember when I first did Uber a long time ago, I was on a business trip in Atlanta. And so, you know, that was the first time I used the Uber ride share, and it would turn great, and after that I used it. But Uber didn't realize that I don't live in Atlanta. They kept sending me advertising stuff. I said, if I lived in Atlanta, I'm like, did they not notice I don't live in Atlanta? I went to the airport, and I never used it again. That means I'm not there, right? And so, so really understanding, and then later on I used um, Uber Eats. I started ordering food for my kids, and they kept sending me the advertisement in Atlanta. And I'm like, hello, my lives in San Francisco area. Don't send me advertising for food in Atlanta. And so really understanding your customers, where are they, right? And putting the two funnels together. So that's what we're doing a lot now. It's like across all the channels of the domains and the devices, uh, and the business of where Uber is and all over the world, trying to understand it's actually the same customer. You know, because everybody's so mobile now, and we use whatever means, social network, whatever, to get to Uber, or you might have gotten a referral, a link from your friends and family, or you went through some coupon that you saw. We have to be able to understand that and know that, oh, it's you, and then really add you value by knowing what happens next. And the same thing, too, is, is like a lot of times, too, within all of our, our partners or many of our um, our, uh, our customers is, is that we also want to know is like if you want to sign up to drive, well then we should be able to tell you, hey, there's like five steps to it. You're in step number two. Are you stuck? Let me now help you right away. And there's three more things. Are you good to go? Otherwise, let me go tell you or let me try to do as much as you can to move you to then you, then you should be done. And then what we're also doing a lot now is um, building user graphs. Right, because it's one thing to know where you are and stuff, but then unless you actually built it in, you don't get the visual. I don't know what you guys are like, but I'm a very visual person. I like to see everything in dashboards and graphs and look at pictures and stuff so I can actually see, right, where in the funnel that my customer all suddenly drop off, whether they seem to always be stuck in step number three of some flow, or how come they never order this type of food? Or why is this city that seems to be so close to the other city, but yet the, the revenue or the trips, or whatever, is not doing well? What's going on there? So we want to build graphs to really understand it, 
uh, and really see right from end to end. Um, and then uh, an analytics experience I mentioned before is, for us, it's actually really key. Because to get better and more efficient, you really have to understand um, where is it that's not efficient? Where is it that's not fast? Where is it that's not easy? Right? Where is it that your customer is confused and where you've lost them already? So always measuring, analyzing, reviewing, learning, retraining the model, retraining the base, uh, and then do it all over again. <laughs> so, so yeah, uh, yeah, a lot of things for us to do in the future. Um, more to come. We've done a lot, but I think there's still lots of opportunities to do better. Okay. You mentioned about the delivery. It's very important to track the delivery. What can you just elaborate? What tools or what mechanisms are in place in Uber to track the delivery, like the messages going back and forth? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, absolutely. So, if it's within our own platform, we we measure. If it's used to third parties APIs, then we kind of leverage our partners to do the measuring for us, and then and then we power it back in. So everything I have is. Um, a lot of times, you know, uh, I pipe everything back into the Uber data warehouse. I store that stuff, and then so I can do a view. So I depend on our partners. If we have partners through APIs and things like that, or within Uber in-house, then I would have that. The channel is mostly SMS, right? That's pretty much what you use. Uh, no, we actually use pretty much everything. SMS, email, phone, push support notifications, uh, uh, ads. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much. I'm Federico Lara, FedEx Cross Border. So um, I'm a gigantic <laughs> Uber user um, uh, who travels. Um, when you are overseas and when the driver, there's a gigantic difference in language. Mm -hmm. Even though the app is in English and the person may be using their app in their local language, mm -hmm. uh, what steps do you think are you going to take to further that? Could it be something that where I'm in the car and even if I'm chatting with the person, you know, the auto translations? Mm -hmm. I mean, what, what are your thoughts in regards to that? because um, there's definitely that you hit that wall with, with the language barrier. We do, and I think that's actually an area of underinvestment for me as I look into where I need to do more of is actually in a lot of translations. Um, because many times, you know, the business is moving so fast that my technology, my platform is not able to keep up as fast. And so you're right, I think um, you do hit either a wall or some sort of a, a performance issue. You're sitting there waiting for the thing to translate because you're right. You know, I, I got a little mouse on the wheel in the back translating, so it's taking a little while. Um, yeah, so that's definitely an area that we need to do a lot better because I notice in many of our agencies, they're like, yeah, I just know that on the third screen, the right button, I click on that one. <laughs> you know, because a lot of things are still in English until we get to we're like, okay, now we should invest in this thing more. And then we'll work on that translation. Mm -hmm. All right. Well. We're going to have a lot Thank more time so a little bit later to talk to Maya individually, too. So uh, feel free to connect. Well, thanks again. Thank you, Mai. Thanks so much. <laughs>